let's touch on that for just to have a second because I had to deal with that today at work. It drives me nuts when people don't <clears throat> take responsibility for anything. But to me, taking full-fledged ownership and responsibility is actually the most freeing thing that you can do. Because if, when you take full-fledged ownership, right, you're also acknowledging that it you're was your control. fault that you were there. Yeah. And it's you have something that you can do to get out of it. Yeah. I don't understand that <clears throat> people that are always constantly trying to push it off on others, yeah. every, like refuse to take responsibility for anything. I wonder yeah. if it's cultural. It feels like we're going through that. Like there's whole groups of people that are ready to point the finger. Oh, thanks, Obama. Like they're just ready to, <laughs> they're ready to blame, put blame on stuff. And there's things yeah. I'm not in, in charge of. I cannot control, you know. But for the most part, I think it, in a sense, I wonder how much of it is related to, and I, you know, we always are harping on these days, like social media or the internet. It's all the, the source of all of our problems. But to a certain extent, just the exposure to the things that are out of your spheres of influence, mm. I think is can, could be influencing that in a way where then you start to feel like... Fearful or yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, you're living yeah. in that fear. Yeah. And then it's easy to kind of start pointing the yeah. finger. When you're in the fear, it's easy to go, your fault. You're, you're the, and it's contagious. the source of it. Oh, yeah. It's 100% contagious. When you spend time around people that are doing that all the time, yep. you're going to do the exact same thing. Yeah. Well, on the other side of the um, – the, the argument for that is when you're doing extreme ownership and you're around those people, you bug the shit out of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they don't like that either. They don't yeah. like how that feels. Like, I can't believe that. And you're like – you ask them the question like someone – they made you angry? Like the guy in that car, that part, you, know, you don't know. You let him ruin your whole day? Like <laughs> you start asking questions like that and they're like, what are you talking about? Like what's wrong with you? Gave him all your power? You gave him all your – you let, I bet I, he won't I think like of you that, one more time today. <clears throat> that phrase of like they're just living rent-free in your head, yeah. man. Yeah. Like rent why? Free. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, living there's rent-free. A, there's the book uh, <laughs> Extreme Ownership. Have you read that one? Uh-uh. Extreme mm-hmm. Ownership. It's written by a Navy SEAL. The dude – He's a storyteller. Wait, is that Chaco? Mm-hmm. It is? Yeah. yeah. And he tells stories about, he'll like, and there's this point, and this is what I learned when I was in, and we were getting shot at by, and you're just like, man, that's a hell of a lesson to learn there. <laughs> and I like it. I like the book because I like those kinds of stories, those stories yeah. that I can remember this. But the theme over and over again is there's there's no one, there's it's no one's fault. It's Right. It's, it doesn't matter. Fault means nothing. Yeah. And it's not fair. It's, fair doesn't mean anything like there's no let's get that those words out of our vocabulary what am i going to do about it what can i do about it what am i responsible for own it and then go for it and everything else is he's just like great that's Hmm. not my thing that's 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 you and so i think that when you're in a workplace like that just you practicing extreme ownership is enough to to move the needle but you are right it repels people yeah they don't it really is (laughs) it literally happened you know an hour before i left i left work Having this huge argument with them with someone, and it's like, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's my fault. She didn't do her job that way. You're 100 percent right. It's my fault, and it just shut him down. Yep. Yeah, like, oh, now you don't have anything to say. Yeah, because right. I'll I'll fix it. It's That's kinda, the whole point. It's kind of like the phrase that you 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 taught us a while ago. Taught me a while ago. Probably probably these guys have heard it before, but that when you're in those kind of hostile situations in a conversation, instead of, instead of reacting with anger, going like, man, I, I, I'm sorry. I feel like we're in a passive aggressive reasoning. Is that what it is? It's not passive aggressive. It's It's straight aggressive. (laughs) (laughs) But it it is, it's also like, it is in a sense taking ownership over it. Right. It's like, what I, what can we you do seem, to kind of resolve you this? You seem very angry yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Call sorry that I did something to anger you. I have, I, I, that is not my intention. Yeah. 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 What can we do to make this right? <laughs> what, did you, what was the name of that? Um, I learned it from the police academy. It's called Verbal Judo. <laughs> when I was in the police academy, I was called it uh, uh, gerbil voodoo. <laughs> uh, my trainer's like, Adam, stop talking. I'm just doing some verbal judo over here. <laughs> so, gerbil, Adam, stop talking. Adam, you. Huh? That was uh, a reoccurring yeah. theme, wasn't it? Gerbil voodoo. <laughs> It actually, it really was. It was. Yeah. And, 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 and your sergeant goes, get a drug test yeah. for this one. Okay. Back of the line, Adams. Okay. I deserve that one. All right. Yeah. 